This is my video on how I motorized an Etch-a-Sketch to make it draw itself. Hopefully you've already seen the other video that has all the music and everything that's uh, focused more on the entertainment, how cool it is. This one's all the nitty gritty of how it works. So I think obviously there's an Etch-a-Sketch and we've got some motors hooked up to drive it, but let's look on the back and see what makes this thing tick. So on the front, and you can see these are the backs of two motors. These are stepper motors, and these are typical for 3D printers, which are doing basically what this Etch-a-Sketch is. They're moving a nozzle left, right, up, down. But on the Etch-a-Sketch, of course, it's just drawing on the back of a screen. And so I figured I'd use exactly the same thing. These little NEMA, I think they're NEMA 17 motors. Surprisingly torquey little suckers, especially when you have them sort of geared down, turning a uh, larger pulley here, giving it some advantage on the Etch-a-Sketch. Really overkill for this project. But what makes them move? How do we know, how do they know how much to turn and when so that these two things can work together? Well, the whole heart of this comes from a Raspberry Pi. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, plenty of great videos out there about it, but I'll, I'll tell you my, my rundown on it. Raspberry Pi was something that was invented in the UK as an educational computer, and that's what it is. This thing is really a computer. And I did this project because I hadn't done anything with a Raspberry Pi, and I wanted to learn how they work. If you haven't messed with them before, they're not that expensive. It's like 40 bucks or less, depending on which one you which one you get. And man, within 10 or 15 minutes after getting it out of the box, we had it hooked up to a monitor. I mean, literally, we we're plugging a, a computer monitor and a mouse and a keyboard into all these USB ports. And this one, Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, it says Model B Plus, this one has built-in Wi-Fi. So all I had to do was put in my Wi-Fi password and boom, we're, we were actually watching YouTube videos just sitting there on our dining room table with, with this little thing. It was, it was amazing. So yeah, these, these are uh, an amazing little device. You, and if you've never played with them before and you're interested at all, man, get one and, and play with it. Now, this is obviously a much more elaborate project. But it's a good idea to start just to get it hooked up and, and working. Now they do run, they're not a Windows or a Mac kind of system. They're running on this open source Linux type software. So it's a little bit more challenging. Just be, be watchful for that. Uh, but so yeah, the heart of all the commands in the programming is running on a Raspberry Pi. So the next question is, how do you take a Raspberry Pi and connect it to one of these motors? Well, you can't because this little tiny chip cannot drive the kind of power. I mean, look, look at the size of these wires that are going to this thing. They're a lot bigger than any of the chips and things on here. So to be able to control that kind of current, you need something called a driver, a stepper motor driver. And it is designed to take the types of signals that a computer can put out these these low current uh, milliamp kind of signals and turn them into amp signals that are well not even a signal anymore uh, turn it into the kind of current the kind of wattage that can drive one of these motors and they give you a little and yeah that that takes a lot of heat and that's why they give you uh, these little heat sinks that come with it because yeah and they they do these guys get warm now, how do I hook up the driver? So basically, I need a Raspberry Pi, tells the driver what to do, and then the driver connects to the stepper motor. And the stepper motor is actually is able to run the Etch-a-Sketch. Now, there is another piece on here that's between the Raspberry Pi and the driver. There, there are a number of ways to connect a stepper driver to a Raspberry Pi and I wanted the least amount of trouble I could have and there is a product called a CNC hat made by Proteneer and there are some guys down in New Zealand 
and it was already set up for I think having up to four axes up to four of these motors controlled for I mean, it's it's designed for CNC projects that run on the Raspberry Pi so those guys down there in New Zealand figured out they, they figured all this stuff out wrote a bunch of software for it there's a online uh, forum you can get on there and ask questions and get some pretty good pretty quick feedback so I went ahead and ordered up that CNC hat that literally plugs right onto these terminals connects up it, it's already set up just plug into the right places and then uh, you get to pick the style of drivers that you want to go with I just went with the really popular one get a whole whole bag of these things for really cheap off of Amazon plug them in there I only needed to run two different axes so I only have two different drivers and connect the stepper motors you can see the wires just plug right into um, into these screw terminals next to each driver and there you go now we mentioned how the we mentioned how the driver takes signals from the Raspberry Pi and then can run large amounts of current directly to the stepper motor. Well, where does that current come from? It's got to come from some kind of power supply. And I wanted, as you saw in the video, I wanted a project that kids could pick up and shape this thing and reset it. And I'm certainly not the first person to connect CNC controls to Etch-a-Sketch. There's a lot of people out there that have done that, but it's Every one of them that I've seen has been bolted down to a table. I don't know how you pick the thing up and, and shake it to, to reset it. I really wanted to be able to do that. I wanted the kids at the science fair to be able to touch and feel and handle this thing and be able to flip it over and shake it so I couldn't have wires hanging off the thing. So And needed to completely encase it in uh, Lexan, which I did. So that meant that I couldn't just have some power cord plugging into the wall. And I decided to go for those 18650 uh, batteries. These are getting more and more popular. But of course, using really nice rechargeable lightweight batteries, okay, how do I how am I going to use this these to power everything that I need on here? Well, I didn't want to be taking them out and charging them and putting them back in, so I put in a battery management system, a little BMS board. And again, another surprisingly cheap electronics uh, off of Amazon. I think this one was like 12 bucks. And these things are really cool. You can connect, you, you get them in a uh, uh, whatever configuration of batteries that you're going to uh, run them for. And then they tap in not just to the each end of, these are all running in series, by the way. So they're not just tapping into each end, but they tap into... Uh, between each battery and it monitors how each cell is doing and makes sure that they're evenly getting charged basically a, a battery balancing system and boy I do not recommend this kind of uh, battery holder with the little spring contacts I again that was another cheap item I got off of Amazon and people warned on there said look don't do anything that's going to be taking more than 500 milliamps off of this they're exactly right. These contacts heat up. When I first got it, the board wasn't working with it because of how much resistance was in each of the springs. So I got a whole pack of them and I pulled the good springs from what I could and the bad springs off of this one and swapped them out. Got it to where it was working. I will be doing another video with a properly made uh, lithium battery pack with uh, spot welded end caps and everything and doing a nice job but th this does work for now I just have to be careful when I'm when I'm charging it and that's the other thing that the uh, BMS board the management system is good for is I can just connect the uh, 16 or so volts that I need to charge all four of these batteries to one spot and it makes sure that all of the batteries are getting, getting charged evenly and then also it won't let the system under charge the battery or, or drain the batteries past a certain point it'll just shut off and not let them get drained so it protects the batteries from overcharge and from draining them down too far so I have that powering directly the uh, uh, 
the CNC hat so all that power can get right to the to the drivers and go out to the stepper motors but then the Raspberry Pi doesn't want the 12 to 16 volts that are coming off of this battery pack it is looking for 5 volts so how do I get 5 volts well I have a uh, voltage converter board Let's see boost and buck converter so it must be a buck converter uh, that steps it down from that 12 or 16 volts doesn't matter what the voltage is coming off of these uh, as long as it's more than the 5 volts this will always put out 5 volts and you have the cable coming off going underneath with uh, what kind of a plug is that yeah USB plug plugging into the power port on the Raspberry Pi underneath and I've got some inputs here for resetting and pausing the program and ultimately a power button to turn the whole thing on uh, now so that's that's all the the hardware side as far as the software we power the thing up now what so I've got a got a screen and a keyboard and everything to, to be able to program the Raspberry Pi how do we make the motors move well if you are familiar with CNC stuff at all you know that uh, CNC machines milling machines plasma cutters whatever even 3d printers run on a thing called G code G G0 G1 G2 G3 uh, this is set up to run G code on a program called BCNC actually there are a number of different programs that are freeware that will run on a Raspberry Pi to, to run G code uh, I ended up going with the BCNC and it works pretty well it's uh, as, as people say the documentation on it isn't uh, as as good as maybe it could be but hey it's free and it works so I was able to create my G code load it on there get it running and program up uh, basically anything that I wanted it to draw and there's a lot more detail in that I'm trying to figure out how to properly record a nice screenshot with BCNC I think I'm gonna load it up on a Windows machine so that I can actually make a nice screen capture because any of the a lot of the BCNC programming out there is just taking a video of a screen and, and the graphics just look terrible and I like I'd like to do it justice and uh, show at least the limited things I know how to do with it uh, so yeah this was just a, a starter video to say hey here are the components and another Raspberry Pi CNC type project example for those of you that are out there considering doing something like this um, if you haven't seen the video where I made this thing look like it was a touch screen playing cat videos look down in the uh, video description below for a link to that video you have to check it out I've got lots more great videos planned on projects I've already done projects that I'm almost done with so be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video